Right, hi guys. I was just going to have a quick chat about the new Sigma 105 f1.4 that's coming. I'm pretty much going to buy this. Uh, at the moment I'm using for portraiture the 135 f2 Samyang E-mount. Um, also the 85mm Zeiss Batis uh, f1.8. And I think to be honest I'm probably going to ditch both of those and go for this lens. Going by what the specs are and how Sigma have actually been talking about it. Um, it's literally a no compromise lens and a lot of people are moaning about the size of it but you know if you can't get anything better than this if it's going to be that amazing um, you know it's going to be worth every single penny. I've just seen a price that's just appeared uh, we were thinking two thousand um, dollars apparently it's going to be fifteen ninety nine as in one thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars so you know, if it's going to be that price, that's absolute bargain, really, for what you're getting, the quality of the, the optics and everything, and the way the, the lens works. Um, so I'm probably going to... I've already registered my interest in it, so hopefully Park Cameras will give me a call sooner sooner rather than later and let me know that it's, it's coming, and I will buy it. Um, I will test it, and um, if I like it, I'll then sell any lenses I don't really need, which will probably be the 85mm and the... The 135 because it's kind of in the in the middle there. Um, I've also got the 7200, but this lens could be really really good in a lot of ways. Uh, one could be product photography. Um, the other one, obviously portraiture. Um, low light, stars, you know stuff like that. A 105 millimeter um, lens. Uh, you know, so it's going to be compatible. Um, you know, with the e mounts, Canon and Nikon, uh, and obviously Sigma. Um, I'm just looking on the, the actual Sigma website here. Um, it says leading the way in f1.4 brightness, the flagship f1.4 art series. And uh, since they introduced the art series in 2012 with the 35mm f1.4, um, which I had, which is a fabulous lens, absolutely fabulous lens. Uh, they didn't do an e-mount, so I had to I had to um, adapt it to make it work, um, which was really good. But it didn't. It, some things it, it sort of didn't do well. I mean, the video didn't didn't autofocus particularly well, um, things like that. But the actual general autofocus was okay. Um, amazingly sharp sharp images at f one point four. Um, but this this massive lens. I mean, people are moaning about the size and the weight. Um, but if you look at the elements in there and how they've basically gone, they say optical systems delivering unsurpassed f1.4 performance. So they are literally shouting about this. Uh, you know, if if you want a lens that is going to be hopefully better than anything else um, out there, it could be one hell of a um, you know serious contender to Nikon and Canon's uh, lenses. Um, it says likes. So like Sigma Sport line series, um, the F uh, sorry the 105 f1.4 art features the highly effective dust and splash proof uh, structure, uh, especially designed ceiling um, around the connection the manual focus ring and the zoom ring. Not that I have a zoom ring. Don't know why it's saying zoom ring. So it won't have a zoom ring. Uh, nice one, Sigma. Um, and the cover connections so allowing photographers to work in all types of weather condition. Um, to the front of the lenses protection by water and oil repelling coating that makes it cleaning easy, uh, cleaning easy. The high speed at high accuracy autofocus helps uh, photographers react and uh, with an instant of getting those um, special shots but also they're saying they've actually um, set it up so it does work with e-mount directly so you're not just having a conversion from uh, the mount conversion they're actually they've actually tuned it to work with this the um, Sony A uh, sorry, the Sony E-mount um, cameras, so like the A7R3, the A7, the A9, uh, you know, so, you know, this, it's going to be good, I think, you know, it's, if you've got the money and you and you don't want to worry about, you know, not having the best, you know, if you if you actually really want the best out there, I think for the money, it's just going to be one hell of a contender. Um, they've got a nine blade rounded diaphragm, which creates attractive um, blur, obviously the bokeh. Um, in full circle, so hopefully we'll get some, it's showing here as a, as a I'll, I'll put a couple of pictures up, 
um, it's showing here as being um, perfect circle uh, bokeh, which should be fabulous. Um, it says the brass mounts combine high precision with rugged construction. It treats surfaces with enhanced um, strength and contribute to the exceptional durability of the lens. Um, which is really nice. They've still got a classic um, focus readout on the on the top of the lens um, as well. There's no stability in this lens, so if you are using a Sony, you've got the the five axis stabilization to to give you a hand if you need it. But to be honest, your shot speed is going to be pretty high, so you don't really need to worry too much. Um, it says here, just so it's it says compa compatible with full frame Sony E mount cameras. The version of this compatible with the Sony E-mount mirrorless cameras contain the same optical system as for the SLRs. The Sigma mount converter MC11 is not required as the lens performs uh, the same functions um, as the converter including the camera image stabilization and in-camera lens aberration correction. Um, in addition the lens is compatible with the Sony uh, Continuous AF um, which is not addressed by um, by the mount converter, so basically they've tuned it, so it should work absolutely bang on. Should be really good. Um, and it says um, also uh, similar plans to offer over the time the Sony E mount conversions for every full frame prime lens currently available in the art line um, from 14 to 135 mil. So if you have got a Canon mount um, a 35 mil f 1.4 art series lens. You could have it converted to a Sony E mount, which is which is good, and it's not that expensive. I think 150 to 200 quid. So um, instead of buying a new lens, you can actually have it converted. So you know, generally lenses you do buy and keep for a, a very good long. You know, if you've got the right lenses and you've chosen well, um, and nothing's come out better that you can replace it with, um, you generally do keep lenses. I mean, I've had some of my lenses for eight or nine years. Some of them maybe longer. Um, so you know it, that makes a difference. Um, yeah, so obviously you've got the Sigma USB dock, which is obviously you can update the firmware and everything on there. I've got one, uh, which is cool. Um, if you did buy a Canon uh, version of this lens, obviously if you've got a Canon DSLR, you can still put the MC11 adapter on it. Obviously it misses out a couple of things they were saying. Um, so you know a couple of things that it can't do if it's got the adapter on compared to if it was an E mount, it was straight on the Sony. Um, it's you've got accessories here, so you can buy um, exclusive lens hood, removable uh, removable um, Arca Swiss tripod socket, and exclusive protection protection cover. So you can buy a few extra bits if you happen to lose them or, or whatever, which is good. Um, and it's made of carbon fibre, so um, your lens hood uh, features CFRP, which is carbon fibre reinforced plastic. So basically, it's obviously a bit of both, it makes it a lot stronger, a bit more um, harder wearing, I expect, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, light but strong, very strong material um, in the interior and exterior fittings of aircraft, among many of other applications. So, which is cool. You can take the um, lens. Sorry, the lens. You can take the tripod collar off. So if you just just want it to hold and you know you're not bothered about the tripod, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I mean generally it does look quite cool. Um, it's got exclusive low dispersion glass. So the the degree of uh, which light is refracted by the glass depends on the light's wavelength. So this uh, this in fact causes different uh, different colours of light to be focused in slightly different points. The Result is um, chromatic aberration, so we see the colour around the edges and stuff sometimes, uh, or the colour fringing. Um, it's particularly noticeable in telephoto lenses. Most chromatic aberration can be removed by combining a high reactivity convex lens element with low refractivity <laughs> concave element, yet um, resid residual um, chromatic aberration known as secondary spectrum may still remain. So I've had it a couple of times where you've got like either a little bit of purple fringing or green around a certain photo or something, um, which in Photoshop obviously you can just get rid of it. Um, so that's quite clever. But if you if it's going to get rid of it completely, pretty much. Um, so yes, yeah, is um, yeah. So obviously the second spectrum may still remain to minimise the second spectrum, 
which can be a serious issue with uh, conventional lenses. Sigma lenses feature a three uh, type of exclusive low dispersion glass offering superior performance. Um, they've even called it ELD, extraordinary low dispersion, um, and SLD, special low dispersion, FLD, which is uh, low dispersion. In particular, FLD glass offers ultra low dispersion and a combination of high transmittance, uh, which, yeah, I mean, basically goes on and on. Um, but it looks like they've hopefully dealt with everything you possibly can get, you know, so. Um, yeah, obviously about flare and ghosting. They obviously dealt with that. I used to get um, an issue if you were photographing the moon, a really bright moon at night time, so a full frame. Um, if I didn't take off the um, UV filter I had on there, you tend to get a little bit ghosting down the lens, especially with a 500mm uh, lens. So you used to take that off, and it used to help a big time, you know. Um, it says, designed to minimise flare and ghosting. So from early stage in the lens design process, flare and ghosting have been measured to establish an optical design that is resistant to strong incident lighting sources such as backlighting. So Sigma's super multi-layer coating <laughs> um, reduces flare and ghosting to help uh, the photographers produce a sharp and high contrast image, um, even in backlit, backlit conditions. So um, obviously that's hopefully going to be quite helpful, um, especially if you're shooting portraiture wide open in you know quite a high backlit area and you're bouncing a bit of light in and you know you could get a, a few issues there um, so that lens I mean what's it saying impression sample gallery um, you know it's going to be big um, you know but by the looks of their test shots and everything they've put in the sample gallery I'll, I'll put them in uh, in the video so you can see um, what's it saying here where's the specs Overview, construction. So 17 elements in 12 groups, that's quite a lot. I've not really seen that many before. Nine rounded diaphragms, so the F, F, blade, F stop blades. Um, angle of view is 23.3, which is, is quite quite narrow actually. Um, maximum aperture F16, which is you know, usual. Um, it will do a one meter, so 100, uh, yeah, 100 centimeters or 39.4 inches minimum focus, so you're not getting that close. Um, and it's a magnification of 1 to 8.3 ratio. 105mm filter size, which obviously people are going to moan about because they're expensive. I'm not going to bother. I'll leave it completely filter free. Um, Sigma, in the past, where I've actually I smashed a lens off. Um, off the body. Uh, I basically tripped through a um, barbed wire fence. Camera came the strap actually came over my head um, onto concrete, like a concrete rubble pile. The camera bounced and tumbled and tumbled and smashed off my 50mm f1.4. And uh, I sent it to Sigma for a possible repair. They looked at it and um, replaced the front element and the rear mount because it had bounced and smashed into bits and pieces. And it cut, they charged me £85. So Sigma obviously still very good value. Um, but after sales, obviously repairs and stuff, they were actually really good. I was so impressed, um, which was which was really good. So um, yeah, what are we going? So it's one point six kilos or fifty eight ounces if you work in ounces. Um, so one thousand six hundred and forty five grams. Uh, yeah, dimensions. It's uh, one hundred and fifteen millimeters by one hundred and thirty one. So four point six inches by five point two. That's not that big. You know, it's not it's not huge at all, really. Yes, it's going to be quite big compared to some of the smaller um, mirrorless cameras. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it does say here, so corresponding AF mounts. So if you've got a Sigma, Canon, Nikon or Sony E mount, they're not doing it for the Sony A mount, which is a real shame. I think, I don't know why um, Sigma have sort of stopped doing the A mounts now. I know the E mount's taken over, but there's still people out there, obviously, with an A99, an A900 and, and some of the other cameras, so it's a bit of a shame they've stopped doing that. But it does say here, so if you're a Nikon user, the Nikon mount version of this lens includes an electromagnetic diaphragm mechanism um, functionality um, which may limit some of the camera on some of the camera bodies. Please see the camera, camera compatibility chart below, so if I click on that. So available combinations, so if you're using some of the Nikons you won't be able to use, it may not work on some of the cameras. 
Um, so a variable combination, so the D5, the D4S, the DF, the D850, the D810, D810A, D750, D610, D500, D7500, D7200, D7100, D5600, the D5500, D5300, 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 D5200, D5100, 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 uh, the D3400, the D3300, and D3200, and the D3100. And it says before using uh, with one of the cameras listed below, so that was on top. So but listed below, please update the lens to the latest firmware. So if you've got a D4, a D3X, D3S, a D3, a D800, D800E, and D700, D600, D300S, D300, and D7000, um, you obviously have to update firmware. And it's saying the lens cannot be used with the cameras not listed above, um, including single lens reflex cameras. So it's obviously up to date cameras, pretty much update cameras only, or some of them which can be firmware updated. So that's interesting, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of other things here impression. Um, I'll put a link in here so you can actually have a read yourself. But I, th I you know, um, yeah. <laughs> They've got other options here, so you've got the Sigma WR ceramic protection, um, 105 millimeter coated um, UV filter, basically. Um, what else have they got here? Uh, a water repellent anti-static type protector. Um, another one there. Um, yeah, UV filter here, optional. So it's about four or five. The tripod socket, so another one you could buy replacements. USB dock. Um, an MC11, if you depending on which mount you've gone for. Um, so there's lots to see here. Um, for me, I'd love it because I do love the portrait chair, but it's all gonna, I can also use the lens for products and things like that. And for the kind of bokeh you can get, you know, from this, um, and the fact it's not that expensive really. If you're using the A9, the A7R3, and the A7 III, or an A7R2, for example. You've got there's four that's four of the best cameras in the world. You know they are seriously good, and if you're using um, the high-end Canons, if you're using the high-end Nikon's as well, like the D8, um, D850, D800, D810, or whatever, um, and uh, you know some of the Canons there, you know the, the high-end stuff, that lens is going to perform so well. Um, if you use it on the lower-end cameras, which I don't know why people, if you've only got a few hundred quid. Um, you know, Sony A6000 or something like that. Yes, the lens is going to be amazing on the camera, but you're not going to get the most out of it. You know, um, that lens out it over exceeds the the body. Um, but if you've got the high end stuff, this lens is that's what it's made for. At the end of the day, um, yes, it will fit. You know, all of the other the bodies and work or whatever. But you know, it's the lens for the high end full frames really. Um, and obviously it is quite expensive, but I think a really good price, you know, 16, if it's going to be 1600 quid or 1600 dollars, I think that is going to be a really good price point, you know, it's about 600 dollars or 600 quid cheaper than the Nikon version. Um, so, you know, and obviously for me, I don't use a Nikon anymore. So, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a, obviously an e-mount's going to be what I'm going to go for. Um, the fact you don't need an adapter, absolutely amazing. Um, you know, and this is the lens that I'm kind of missing out of my, um, you know, bag really. I used to have a 135 f1.8 uh, Zeiss lens, amazing, but it was the old screw drive. And it was f1.8, um, really sharp lens, but it did struggle with the focusing because um, it was old screw drive, so it wasn't overly accurate, and you had to be really, really careful with it. Um, I sold it, and I actually made money on it because it's obviously a very rare lens now. And it was in pretty much amazing condition. And I bought it luckily when Sony was still quite new um, and got it for absolutely hardly any money at all. And I made about 300 quid on it, which was great considering I owned it for about five years and actually made more money. But um, so that was great. But yeah, I think this will be the the lens for my bag, which for portraiture wise, pretty amazing. And you know, if it's going to be that great, it's going to be worth the money. And if you think about it, the 85mm. Um, so if we type in now, so if we went, so for example, the Sony 85mm f1.4, 
G Master. That is at the moment, that is retailing at uh, WEX, 1300 quid. So in England, um, it was at £1,500, it's now down to, they've got £200 off. So 1300 quid for the G Master. And that's a used one, sorry, that's actually used. That's an open box, that's been, um, that's an open box, that's actually quite a good price. Um, let's type in, so they've got a new one. So the 85 now. Uh, new one. Du, du, du. 16.49 plus 100 pound cash back. So if the Sigma comes in at the price point of that is, or cheaper, it's a no-brainer. It really is a no-brainer. Um, and the glass they make, you know, the glass on the Art Series lenses is incredible. And the, we know the fact this this 105 f1.4 is a is a uh, so pretty much a no compromise lens, so they've put all you know everything into it they possibly can. So it's definitely going to be a a no brainer there. Um, but uh, anyway, write a comment down, whatever you think, because I, you know, I, I think for me it's going to be good um, and worth the money to you know purchase um, to get more out of my portraiture that I, you know I do. Um, like I say and products and, and you can use it for other things. Um, it would be interesting if they do a two times converter for it. Probably won't, not on the E mount anyway. But you know, are they going to do a two times? You could obviously you have a nice prime uh, two hundred and ten mil. Um, you know, that could be quite nice. Depends. I don't know if they'll do that. Um, but anyway, so write some comments below. See what you think. If you, you know, are you going to buy it? You know, it doesn't matter what camera you're going to have. But at the end of the day, all the cameras are amazing. Um, I don't care what make you're using in the day as long as you're taking amazing photos or learning how to take amazing photos that's the most important thing um, it doesn't matter what make you're using you know they're all as good as each other and they all have their you know flaws or weaknesses but they're also amazing at other things so you can't really compare them too much and whatever brand you choose is what the one you use so you know that's it but anyway guys so please subscribe please click the notification bell and obviously write some comments below and ask some questions or you know Whatever you want to say, really, um, you know. But you know, are you going to buy it? That's the question. Um, I've certainly put some interest in already, and uh, I shall get one as soon as I can. Hopefully, um, hopefully in a month or so. Hopefully, it will come out. So who knows? But uh, that's it for now. Cheers.